Excuse me. Question. Um, where are your shirt? I'm kidding. Oh. I just thought you were cute. No. Oh, I wanted <laughs> to say hello you. to you. Well, thank you. What is your name? I could have just read your name tag and gotten your name. <laughs> What's your name? I can't read your name tag. Jesse. Jesse. Yeah. Where are you from? Orange County. Oh. Yeah. Your face is awesome. Really? Yes. <laughs> You're so cute. Like I, I was going to the actual mall area. So far, he's doing a really good job at showing intent and also being grounded. He's being very unreactive, and you can tell the girl is reacting to him more than he's reacting to the girl, and that's generally a dynamic that will make you come across as very attractive to women. And I didn't know exactly how to say hello to you. So in my mind, I was thinking, I'm gonna talk about these shirts for a good five seconds, but then I just bypass all that shit and said hello. <laughs> Oh, hello. So, um, what do you like to do for fun? A very generic question, I know, but you know, I feel like we should start somewhere. Yeah, that is true. What do you like to do for fun? Um, I like watching movies. Hmm. Kind of weird, like drama, suspense. Name one. What's your favorite drama, I suspense movie? I just watched movie? one that was really good. Um, Love Two Girls, Kills. One Cup? Oh. Oh, two girls, one cup. He did something really clever there that I might steal for myself. He goes up to the girl and he asks, what do you do for fun? But then he says, yes, I know, a very boring question, very basic question, but we have to start somewhere. That makes it a lot more interesting, it makes him seem more unique, and it's a very simple way to give the interaction more depth so that you don't seem like every other guy who's approaching this girl. Also, when the girl started to talk about her favorite movie, he interjected and said, what is it, two girls, one cup? which is basically a way to accuse her of being pervy, of being a little weird, and it's a way to make the interaction sexual, to make the conversation topic go towards sex, but in a way that isn't his fault. He's blaming it on her. So he's not the one who's being pervy, she's the one who's being pervy, and that's a great way to make an interaction more sexual. Love Kills? Yeah. What is that it's about? It's from 1985, I think. It's about this guy who falls in love with this girl, mm -hmm. he's married. The wife gets jealous mm -hmm. and kills the girl. Oh. But they blame it on Wait, him. are you psycho? <laughs> no. <laughs> does, does your taste in movies have anything to do with your actual personal... Maybe I am a little psycho. Like okay. 10% okay. As long as you're not 100% psycho. No. 10%? Yeah, 10%. I think I can deal with 10%, okay? And 40% normal, and then the other percentages are something else. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> what, what are the other percentages? <laughs> well, you know, the other ones, the abnormal ones, the awkward ones. Uh -huh. That's actually, those are still kind of normal. Right? Everyone's kind of abnormal and awkward. Yeah. Yeah. I guess I just admit them more. Some people That's say good. You're blunt. Yeah, I guess. I know. Or weird. Uh, either way. Right. Yeah. And I know I am. Good. <laughs> the conversation they're having is a lot more interesting than the average conversation that a guy and a girl would have after they just met. And there are two main reasons for that. One is that Jesse just comes across as confident and comfortable with himself. He's at ease, which makes the girl feel at ease. And the other reason is because he's very good at free association. When the girl says her favorite movie is about this psycho woman, he associates that to say, how much of a psycho are you? Why do you like this movie? And that's what's giving this interaction depth and making it very emotionally engaging for the girl because the things he's saying aren't following a natural logical sequence that you'd expect in an interaction. What he's doing is lateral thinking, which makes it more creative, more interesting, and that is very powerful. I need to figure out what you do with What do I do? Yes. Like, what do I do for a living? Oh, for school. Uh, I'm done with school. Now I make YouTube videos for a living. Oh, I see. Yeah. So it's your really hands odd. are pretty much just right here. You yeah. Know what to do with them? They're at about waist level. Yeah. Great for you know interchanging between typing furiously and masturbating. Um, <laughs> that was a joke, <laughs> but seriously. Oh well, yeah, <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> um, but yeah. What's up? I've said some pretty ridiculous jokes right now, and you're going with it. I like that. Yeah, they're funny. You, you see, you're very um, blunt too. We should probably have a date that in incorporates bluntness, and we can, you know, make each other feel awkward and weird and funny. <laughs> well, yeah, I guess so. Do you want to exchange numbers, and I'll shoot you a you text? Well, actually, I'm, I'm seeing someone. Why did you, like, tap the shirt as you said it? She tapped the shirt because she's disappointed, and she likes Jesse, and she wants to see him again. I'm going to get your number, and I'll text you later. Even though you do have a boyfriend, it, we'll see what happens, okay? <laughs> okay. Fair? Sure. 
<laughs> I don't want to get you in trouble. All right. And what is it? It is 323. 323. To shoot you a text in a bit. And um, we can go from there. Okay. Where did you live here in LA? Van Nuys, yeah. Oh, you? Yeah, here in LA. 15 minutes away. From ah. So, like, yeah, we're close. We can go on a date, maybe. <laughs> Well, we'll see. Nice. We'll see. <laughs> I'm like thinking, perhaps I'm. <laughs> we'll see. It you was very nice to meet you. But you do, do you have two girlfriends? Um, no, I actually just broke up. And like, my heart is. This song is very indicative of how I feel. How long were you with her? Not too long, thankfully. Just a few <laughs> months. <laughs> Why are you laughing? Well, because you're like, oh, we just, and they're like, yeah, not so long. Well, a few months still. I mean, there's still emotion, but it's just not like years, thank God, before I realized she was psycho. You um, know, do, do you think I'm emo not emotional? Because every time I see people, I always feel like they're going to be there forever, but uh -huh. never close. I feel like that, too. I think that's just life. So when they leave, I'm like, oh, well, they're still there. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. That's just a part of life, I think. You know, it happens. Yeah. The girl is doing something very interesting, which is actively rationalizing how her relationships don't matter that much to her and how they're kind of disposable and she can afford to get rid of them while she's talking with this new guy who's a prospect. And that implies pretty strongly that she's attracted to him and that she wants to see him again, even though she has a boyfriend. And that's a good example of what girls will do when they really like you. They're less likely to say, oh, I want to have sex with you, I'm so attracted to you. But they're more likely to say things that imply their interest in subtle ways, like what she's doing right here. Yeah, I could get over my boyfriend pretty easily, implying that she's attracted to him. That's one of the most common ways that girls will show interest in you. So this approach was better than Jesse's first approach. It was really good, especially in terms of him just being unreactive and his verbal game being witty and emotionally relevant to the girl and getting the girl to emotionally invest. So overall, that was a very strong interaction. Let's see how the attractive man's second approach is in comparison. Hi. Hi. This is totally random. <laughs> Yes. I was just walking that way, and I saw you, and I thought I would kick myself if I didn't say hi to you. Hi. Hi. I'm Matt. Stacy. Stacy? Yes. Sir. Nice to meet you, Stacy. In both of Matt's approaches, the girls are just amazingly positive in the way they react at first. They just can't control their laughter, and they're clearly very attracted. Why is that? It's because of his nonverbal communication. It's because of his intent. It's because he goes up and he makes very strong eye contact. It's very clear that there is a sexual energy in the way he's holding himself. And the girls feel that and it makes them react. <laughs> You're funny. I'm funny? Mm -hmm. Where are you from, Stacy? Russia. Oh, no. Why? You shouldn't have told me that. Why? Because I have a thing for Russians. Uh. I was just in St. Petersburg, yeah, and I fell in love with it. It was amazing. <laughs> and Ukraine. Yeah, I'm actually like Ukrainian. Same. Ukrainian? Yes. That's even worse. <laughs> <laughs> I'm from Kiev. Kiev? Okay, yeah. I've been to Kiev. Yeah. Did you like it's a good it? city. Yeah, I like my favorite city though is Lviv. 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 Yes, yes, it's that's very, a good city. It's better. It's like St. Petersburg in Russia. The same as yeah. I consider. It's more like quaint and mm -hmm. you can there's a lot of cool stuff. You get to see the culture. Yeah, yes. exactly. <laughs> well, listen, I have to go that way. Yes. But besides being from Kiev, being Ukrainian, what is something cool about you? Because I don't know anything about you. I, uh, I don't know what to tell you. Like, what are you passionate about? Fashion. Fashion? Okay. Beauty. Um, really? Not the beauty in the uh, meaning that just nature. I'm a pacifist. Matt is doing a great job at holding the tension in the interaction and not getting reactive, not flinching, basically. And most of what makes an interaction have that sexual energy isn't about what you say, it's the way you hold yourself. And he's doing an amazing job at that, better than Jesse was, even though in terms of his verbal game, he's not being as clever or interesting. Okay. <laughs> You're like easygoing. 
yes. kind of girl. Exploring. Mm -hmm. Exploring life, personality, yoga. Um. Yoga? Nice. <laughs> yes. I think that says a lot about somebody. Yes. If they're, they um, do like yoga and they're into nature, things like that. You will never get a correct answer which will satisfy you for me because this is how I see myself mm -hmm. but it's not the way you see me so mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah. it's hi hi it's Matt this Daddy. is my friend Daria I'm Matt Daria are you Ukrainian too Moldova Moldova okay I was in Chisinau hmm? I was in Chisinau Chisinau we Why say Chisinau Eastern Europe uh just traveling wow, a lot crazy. Yeah, I traveled for... Uh, Raphael, what are you doing? Face it this way. Face the, face the camera this way. Hi. Hi. Uh, I can relate to Matt on this one. The hardest part about filming infield is getting your cameraman to actually point the camera at you. It's apparently really difficult to do, so I understand uh, why he's a little bit frustrated there. Good. Stay safe. Nice to meet you. It, did it die? No. Okay. Okay. Uh, well, I have to go. Sure. So here, put your number in my phone. <laughs> Are you, you from my? You area? live here? Okay. I am not from here actually. I'm from LA. LA? Yeah. That's even better. Wait, Daria? No, that was. I'm Stacy, she was Daria. Stacy. Anastasia. Anastasia, Daria, okay. Too many names. Okay. <laughs> Foreign names. A N A S T A. Regular. Yeah. Like, like a that. movie. Right? Yes. Anastasia, yes. okay. Safe. Yeah, I'm actually only here. When you're watching Infield, it's easy to focus on the verbal layer of what's saying, like how witty is the guy, how clever is he. But what really matters most is the vibe, the energy in the interaction. And if you watch Matt's interactions, they have a lot of sexual energy and you can feel that. And that's really what you should be focusing on. Is he getting the girl to react to him in a very feminine sexual way or is it logical and non-emotional? This is a good example of what you should be looking for in infield because even though his verbal game isn't the best in this interaction, his non-verbal game is very, very good, and that is actually more important. Until tomorrow. Until tomorrow. So I guess our love affair is gonna have to be very brief, <laughs> very short. <laughs> but what are you doing tonight? Actually, I have a test tomorrow. You have a test, so you can't go out tonight? Oh no. I just came here because uh, I wanted to meet with my friend. Oh, uh, her? Yes. Then you better go back to her. Yes. All right. Well, I guess we'll always have this moment. Yes, and <laughs> we, we should make it. That was smooth physical escalation because first he just handshakes the girl, but he doesn't let go and he keeps holding a little bit longer. And then he pulls her up to hug him. And when she pulls back, he holds her by the hips, which is a way to make the interaction very physical and very sexual but he didn't come across as weird or uncalibrated in the way that he escalated. So that was very smooth and I really liked it. Like a movie moment. <laughs> Do you know that moment? You know what I'm talking about? Like right before... Yes, I, I absolutely know what right. I mean. Right before you're about to kiss somebody. <laughs> yes. Or it's like all this tension. It's just tension. like the time stops. Yeah. That's it. Like everything, you're in your own little, you're in your own little <laughs> yes. world. Come here. <laughs> No. <laughs> no, that would be bad. I'd barely no, even know no, you. no, no, no. Right there, he tried to grab her hands again, but she pulled back and then she sat down to get away from him, which is basically her refusing his attempt to go for the kiss, but he didn't notice that, or at least he didn't respond to that, and he kept trying to go in for the kiss, and of course, she rejected him. He wasn't noticing the sign. So that's an important part of physical escalation, is to notice, is the girl giving me green lights? 
or is she giving me red lights? And if she's giving you these red lights, you need to take a step back and wait instead of just pushing further and further. So this was a mistake on his part. Although, to be fair, he might be pushing it because he thinks he can get good footage for an infield. It might not be what he would normally do. It might just be for the fact that he's being recorded. So it's important to keep that in mind. But it would be crazy. You don't know me, I don't know you. But it would be... It's... <laughs> It would be crazy. Though. No! <laughs> you're, I know I'm crazy. You're crazy and you make me... I, I'll make you, I'll make you I, my, my Miami I girlfriend will, for the next one, five minutes. That's it. Then, it. then it will be okay. Yes. Okay. Are you giving me a twirl? Yes. Okay. No. Come here. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. I can't. I can't. <laughs> Alright, well listen. I have your number. I think you should try to get off work. Yes. Cancel. Say, I can't work. The tonight. world stop and I just yeah. go and meet you. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. Good plan. High five. All text right. me. I'll text you. Okay. Bye. Yeah, that's better. Like that's a better. gentleman. Gotta take it slow. In that interaction, Matt did a great job at making the interaction sexual and making her feel butterflies in her stomach. So that was great. But he was a little bit too pushy at the end, and being too pushy is how you end up getting flaky numbers. Because the girl's gonna think, well, if I'm in a bed with him, is he gonna be too pushy then? Can I really trust him? Ultimately, this is a very tough call to make because they're very close. Jesse is better at being verbally witty and at getting the girl to invest more in terms of making an emotional connection. But Matt is better at creating a sexual vibe and making it very man to woman and making the girl feel something that will compel her to want to see him again because she feels those butterflies. She's going to be like, damn, that guy's interesting. I want to know him better. This one is too close to call to say there's a very clear winner and a clear loser. There's room for error, but I don't want to leave you hanging. So I would say overall, Jesse's game was better than Matt's by a small margin because Jesse left room for the girls to really invest in him. His conversations were interesting and they had depth, which made it so that he had a stronger connection with the girls. And although the raw sexual energy that Matt Artisan had in his interactions is very powerful, spending more than two minutes in an interaction and, and actually getting to know the person is very important. And also, he turned out to be a little too pushy and he didn't calibrate when he tried to physically escalate with the girl in the last interaction. The best way to put it is that if you were trying to get a lot of dates, Jesse's approach would be much more effective. It's more likely that his approaches are going to turn into dates later because he built a strong connection. But if you're going out and trying to pull a girl home, Matt's strategy would be much more effective because there's just that sexual charge, that raw sexual energy, and that's what makes a girl want to have sex with you. However, because he was intentionally leaving the interactions and saying, you know what, I have to go, he didn't give himself the opportunity to pull, so he wasn't optimizing his strategy in a way that makes sense. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more content like this, check out my Patreon, it's linked below. In my Patreon, you can see exclusive coach versus coach videos like this. I have infield videos of myself approaching women that you can't find on YouTube and a bunch of other exclusive content. And you'll also get to help support my channel so that I can make more content like this for you. And of course, make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell button. If you don't hit the bell button, you won't be notified when I release a new video.